Dear friends, I was asked to come and speak to you, and I'm very happy to, uh, but my experience in some of your fields of expertise is very, very, very limited. I'm simply, well, I'm a Catholic, and I'm a priest, and I think that there's a lot of important and beautiful ideas in everything associated with the theology of the body, obviously, and also with natural family planning. So I think we're here today to talk about things which are natural, which might strike you as completely obvious, but I think we live in a time where things which were always considered natural are no longer considered natural. We could probably agree on that. And so it seems that we have a common base not only to talk amongst ourselves about these things which are so important for our well-being as men and women and for our families and for our children, but also with those who may not share our faith at all because we are speaking about a topic which is natural and effectively pertains to natural law. If you ask a young person now, including less young people like me, what is natural law? People scratch their heads and go, well, it's from a long time ago. And so therefore the assumption is it must be out of date and we should really replace it with something a bit better, something more positive, like positive law. Um, but in fact, we are speaking about things common to the whole species. Um, and so we are speaking about life. Uh, you've spoken a lot about life, I think, in the last days. Some of you have written about life in all of its forms. We're speaking about the right to life, the right to sustain your own life, and of course the right to be able to bear children naturally and to be able to propagate the species, to be completely blunt. And as someone who has just come back from some years overseas living in one of the most Catholic countries in the world, I have to tell you, anecdotally anyway, um, the observations are that the society is in a lot of trouble. You know this, I imagine, the figures and the trends and the patterns of uh, family life and children and fertility in a country like Italy, and certainly not only Italy, but it is a rapidly aging society. And I think most Catholics, well-intended, have never heard the good news of uh, everything associated with natural family planning. It simply became a topic which isn't spoken about very much. Priests are not necessarily opposed, but they just seem often not perhaps to speak about it, perhaps not to understand. And so you have the phenomenon so widely attested of massively shrunk families, huge numbers of rel relations in the older generation, very, very small numbers of children. And the Europeans are aware of this, but often only in an uneasy way that they can't properly articulate and they think things might change and they hope things might get better. If you go into rural Italy, you will find in certain places empty towns, towns where the people have left because they have grown old and they cannot sustain themselves anymore and there are no children or grandchildren. Sometimes they've emigrated and left, but they just haven't replaced themselves. And so they are slowly realizing, but it's very slow, that they are entering a demographic winter of their own making and they don't know what to do. And they don't quite know how they got there. And so, dear friends, I think everything that you are here to learn about and uh, discuss and share with each other is of the utmost importance for societies far away, but for our very own right here. Uh, we too are shifting our patterns of uh, family life and structure. And we too have entered very strange, uncharted territory where things which were always considered unnatural, in fact, directly violated the nature placed in us or that we have received, that is ours to share, were considered abhorrent and are now considered increasingly possible. And I think it is particularly troubling because our own society, of course, is an African one and we expect to avoid some of the potholes and obstacles that have occurred elsewhere. I think that our country and our people, whether they are from South Africa or not, need to hear everything that is associated with the theology of the body. I was in Rome when Pope John Paul died. It was a very moving time, a very beautiful, very sad time. And I was there when Pope Benedict was elected. And so I saw this transition from Pope John Paul to Pope Benedict, uh, just the beginnings of it anyway. And, of course, we know that the theology of the body is the set of 
extraordinary but simple ideas and insights into the human condition um, that Pope John Paul pioneered over those many years of his Wednesday audiences. And Pope Benedict immediately picked up on them. He is not the same. He said at one point when he was at World Youth Day in Australia and they wanted to make him hold a koala bear, and he said, Pope John Paul was Pope John Paul. Pope Benedict is Pope Benedict. Um, but the, one of the first things that he said on that day that he was uh, installed as the successor to the Apostle Peter, he said, you remember, Christianity is not about an idea. It's about a person. And so everything that we are interested in um, is embodied. This is not directly what he said, but uh, it follows on embodied in human beings. And so, of course, our salvation and our happiness and our fulfillment lies through our bodies joined to our spirits. Again, an extremely uncontroversial idea, so we thought, um, and yet increasingly under a certain threat. Bodies are bad and are to be ignored or done away with, or all sorts of things can be done to them. Spirits are the real me. And yet when we talk to each other, it's not just spirit to spirit, it's spirit and body. And so everything that is being taught and studied from the theology of the body seems vital, again, for the whole of the human condition. Um, we are not just an idea, a spirit in a vacuum. We have been given flesh and blood bodies. And so we need to know how to interact with each other and how these bodies are a source of great good and great happiness when they fulfill all the functions God has given us in a natural way. So I am happy to be here and I thank you for asking me to come and I look forward to hearing everything that you will share with us this afternoon.